I'm well. Uh, crazy. Today's my kids' first day of school. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Mine so I've been nice. trying to like be present for my kids while while tracking this Hans Niemann story twenty four hours a day. It's, uh, <laughs> quite yeah. quite a balancing act. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna admit that yesterday I got caught up in it, and uh, I spent at least a couple hours like. <laughs> You know, there's this there's this trap where you think some kind of new information is about to drop, and so you yeah, start following exactly. the story, and actually, no new information is coming. I, though I guess it was kind of surprising. You know, so I should announce um, we are going to cover it in the Dojo Talks podcast tomorrow, and I think it's good we're waiting a little bit to the dust to settle. Um, but uh, it's surprising that Magnus hasn't followed up with anything, right? Yeah, I'm hoping for a bit more information. It's a little out of hand right now, in my opinion. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it will come from Magnus or somewhere else, but one would hope there's uh, some meat on this bone. I, there's a lot of accusations. Do you are you going to do something yourself? I'm in a similar boat. I you know, I thought about it. I I generally record interviews two weeks in advance, and it feels insane that I have, like, one interview coming out next week. Or today with Kaidana, obviously, we don't talk about it. One with Agar, where we talk about everything under the sun, but not that, because it was recorded a while ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm even interviewing Carissa Yip today for two weeks from now. But that feels like I can't talk about it, because who knows what's going to happen in the next two weeks. So, um, so I think... I'm similar to you guys. I'm going to see if any new news comes out, and then I might try to line something up and drop something around Friday. Um, but if if it's just sheer speculation, if there's no new developments, I don't know if I'd even do a podcast, like a special uh, quick-release podcast. Yeah. I think there's a number of interesting storylines. I, I put it in our uh, in our Discord, and you know, we're talking about what we're going to talk about. I, I felt like... Um, yeah, there's another... Well, I don't want to get too deep into it, but one of the things that's so weird about the cheating with chess.com is normally... I mean, let's just say, let, let's just say, many, many title players have been busted at chess.com. Yeah. But it's all under the rug because they never make it public. But then Hans was caught, like, online. He was streaming it. So then it becomes this interesting question, regardless of whatever you think he was cheating with Magnus, like, oh, well, wasn't there an obligation by the organizers to say, no, buddy, you can't play because you were caught cheating once? I don't know. Interesting question. Yeah. <laughs> interesting question. I don't know. Um, and then there's this whole thing about, like, are you, was, like, are, is Hikaru implicitly saying that Hans cheated by doing his big old stream? I don't know. I felt like it wasn't so implicit. <laughs> he was, he was, <laughs> but he on the other hand, to... you kind of have to talk about it, right? Like, you had to say, like, why you thought Magnus didn't play. I mean, we yeah. all... You, you, there's no way around it in, the, in this thing, unless, unless you have some wild speculation as to another reason why Magnus didn't play. Yeah, you have to talk about it, but it's like he started out trying to be um, circumspect. You know, when the first clip that that generated when he went on stream was him saying, "All I'm gonna say is that Hans was didn't play for six months on Chess.com. That's all I'm gonna say." And then he said, a, <laughs> right. then he said a lot more things after that. Um, so, um, so yeah, if he had left it at that, you, you know, you've you've hinted that there's there's a precedent to be um, suspicious. But, but yeah, I mean, he, he went a bit farther and yeah, shout out to chat. I saw, um, I was, yeah, um, Grub, Grub Smack saying maybe it has something to, to do with Magnus Prep being leaked. I mean, my um, uninformed speculation is that seems more doable than cheating in broad daylight. Like, okay, it's one thing this tournament in Cuba or whatever, you know, where no one's watching, but Sinkfield Cup, you've got thousands of people watching you. Right. Um, and and people are going to look at the videos, you know. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I don't have any big insights, but I, I do hope there's more information considering all these accusations. The other thing that I think is interesting is <clears throat> when we were talking about Magnus giving up the world title, I kind of, my, part of my intuition is, you know, 
first of all, I, it's not, I don't feel this is an intuition that people are going to yell at me about this. Is I feel that he's, first of all, just definitely neurodivergent. The guy's got a brain that works differently than other people's. And one of the things that's so weird about the Fisher thing is that is he started getting weird at a certain stage of his life. Be, and Fisher, I feel, also clearly neurodivergent. <clears throat> and so there's three things that have happened in Magnus's life here. Rapid succession, which seem odd, dude. So there's this other question of like, well, forget about the cheating for a second. Is like Magnus on full tilt, dude. Yeah. And that would be, well, I think it would be disastrous. For, I mean, it's already disastrous for the chess world, but if Magnus is going on full tilt... I don't know yet. We're going to see. But like the, like, you know, the beginning signs of maybe him going on full tilt are a little bit there. I don't um, know. He sounded pretty measured in that Lex Friedman podcast. Like, obviously, you can you can take his his um, actions in isolation and they might seem a bit unhinged. But like when you just give him a microphone for two and a half hours, yeah, he sounds quite, you know, quite sane and even insightful. So though interesting, uh, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, didn't you have a reaction when, 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 in that podcast, when Magnus, I feel, did a different take on why he stopped doing, he re retreated from the world championship, namely that he was afraid. Well, he admitted that he was afraid. Yeah. I mean, it, he. But the bottom line is, he doesn't enjoy the process, and being afraid is a contributor to that. So, I mean. You know, the, he, he revealed more of the reasoning behind it, but I feel like yeah. the, the top line reason is still he doesn't enjoy the whole thing, you know? Uh-huh. I thought the fear thing was really interesting. It was a different explanation than what he had given before. Um, maybe have less sympathy. <laughs> yeah, I already well, have. Well, I know you're, um, yeah. I know you're a Kahneman fan. I mean, that's what he's written about. The, the mm. you know, the impact of losing is multitudes greater than the... Um, the joy of winning. I think a lot of chess players experience that. And then if you multiply it for being on the highest stage with mm. the most people watching and judging, I think it's only human. Well, right. And then we saw, we saw the effect of, we might have seen the effect of losing on a, a slightly smaller stage two days ago. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what Alex Fishbein, shout out to him, who I interviewed recently. Yeah. And he said at the end of my interview, he thinks that this is like the beginning of the end for Magnus as a dominant force. This was obviously preceding the news. Uh -huh. So he was on Facebook again today saying like, you know, <laughs> this could go a number of ways, but he lost the game. And now he's, uh, you know, behaving m more different from the norm than before. So um but anyway, I, you know, there's just so much speculation that could be done. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, a lot of people I see in chat um, talking about the, the parsing of the interviews. That's where I think people really go too far. I mean, this kid, first of all, he's unequivocally good at chess. You know, like people have been playing like Greg Shahadi's watched him develop, played him in blitz over the years. Mm -hmm. Like. If he's cheating, he's still 25, 50, 2600 strength, you know, he's not like, so this idea that he's just forgot everything he knew in the analysis um, is, is, you know, it has to do with the pressure, if anything. And the kids like, you know, it was, I, I see a lot of people praising Alejandro. He did a good job in the, the uh, evaluation of the moves. But to me, if there's an elephant in the room, you should address it, you know, um, you, you don't have to outright accuse him. You can say, like, you know, there's speculation about this. Um, mm -hmm. I think that would have been more productive. But anyway, I mean, his mind must be, like, incredibly distracted, both during the game and then to try to reproduce your analysis. Um, you know, whether you cheated or not, he knows what he's being accused of during that interview, and I think it would be hard to give a regular interview under those circumstances. Yeah. Um, I'll say this about the rating, and then we're, then we're going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so with the Rousey's thing, it was obvious to a lot of, or at least let's not say obvious. Let's say it was deeply suspicious. And I knew the guy, by the way, I played with him in the Bundesliga. And he was like, at that time, he was like around my, what, what became my level. So like 2,500 feet. He was always floating around there. So he went from 2,500 feet to jumping up into the high 2600s. So that was only like 100 and let's say 160 points, but 
especially when you're an older dude, it's like, oh no, <laughs> something like, 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 let's say, let's say that I go back up to my, I think I reached a high of 25, 30 feet or something like that. If I go up to miraculously up to 25, 80, that's plausible. If at this stage in my life, I go to 2,600 plus Ben, <laughs> then you know something's <laughs> up, buddy. Right. <laughs> you know something's up. So with, with Hans, like it was, it is, it, it's remarkable. It's, it's remarkable enough to draw attention. Does that mean he's cheating? No, but it's like, it's a remarkable enough rise to really draw attention. And like, uh, I did the commentary there for the juniors in 2019 and Hans was nobody special at that tournament, you know, playing at the 2400 level, you know. So to have him go so much in such a short period of time, it, at the very least, it you know, it has to raise eyebrows. Yeah, it clearly has. I mean, yeah. to, to what P. Mork is, is saying in chat, like, obviously, everyone's making accusations, Nepo, Faruja, Caruana, everyone except Aronian amongst the elite that have talked about it. Right. They all seem suspicious, but it's just frustrating to me that no, one, no one's saying how he would be doing it, um, which to me is uh, a far more interest than like, hey, this guy's playing really well all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about it tomorrow. I feel like, uh, you know, I've hung around the St. Louis club a lot and um, I remember me and Gawain Jones were walking around there and trying to imagine how you would cheat and you know, it's hard. It's hard. First of all, you know, you're wanted and everything. And the only way we came up with is like you look out the window and you got some guy sitting at the Starbucks across the street and he's got some code or some shit that, right. you know, you're able to see. I don't know. And then the whole thing, like a chip embedded in somebody's head, like Shabalov I know, was right? joking about that ages ago. He was like, yeah. And a lot of the a lot of the top players like Shabalov and Christensen, they are convinced that cheating is going on, and you know, like open tournaments, maybe. And, and yeah. you have different um, different intuitions about how much. Clearly, some is going on, but then the like question is like, well, how much is going on, and then how would they be doing it? Um, but the whole embedded chip thing, I mean, that's the only way to like. I don't know that I can imagine it, and that's so high tech. I don't. I can't wrap my mind around it, man. I can't wrap. Yeah, my mind around it. and and he just found out he's playing in this less than a week ago. I mean, has he been doing this all along? Is he traveling with an accomplice? Like, there's just, <laughs> <laughs> like, there's just uh, two two accomplices. Like, how how deep does this go? You know. Right. So again, I'm not I'm not saying it's impossible. Like a lot of people, a lot of rational people seem very suspicious, but right. it just seems like. Uh, um, there there's we're missing some key elements here for sure yeah and meanwhile this is this kid's whole career and reputation being dragged through the mud and yes he cheated before but like like you said jesse i mean i've heard names of people who've never been outed you know i actually hadn't heard hans um but many gms who've who've been uh quiet suspended for for cheating online yeah actually i just on that point i remember uh, Danny Wrench, we were hanging out at a tournament. This is back pre-pandemic, and he was like, "Jesse, if you sign a non-disclosure agreement, I will show you. <laughs> I will show right. you the list." And I was like, "I don't want to see it, buddy. <laughs> right. yeah. I don't want to see it." But I knew that it was very deep and long of people who had cheated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, my friends, let's do this. Uh, we are about to start the real show. We have been pumped to show Ben for a while. <clears throat> and so I think we're just gonna jump to it. And this is me giving Ben a tour of the Chess Dojo training program. Any final thoughts before we jump in? Are you ready to go? I think I'm ready to go, yeah. We could just talk in circles for ages. So uh, <laughs> regarding the Hans Neiman thing, yeah. And this is overdue, so let's do it.